Welcome back, everyone, to Catalyst Wrestling. I'm your host, David Lee, and we are in the middle of the $20,000 Side Out Tag Team Tournament. And joining me today on this panel discussion are none other than my esteemed guest, the extreme original, the only player coach in all of Catalyst Wrestling. He is H.C. Look. How you doing, H.C.? Super Dave, how are you, man? Another week back here, Catalyst Wrestling Tag Team Action. I know a little something about that. Let's get to it. <laughs> you definitely do. And also on the panel is the hot boy hopeful, the man with all the hair, Brendan Lewis. Uh, you had a pause there. Did you forget? Did, no, did no, I just had to pause. all the hair? I, I was mesmerized by the flowing locks that you were adjusting. That I think you was... forgot your name, Brandon. I think you forgot <laughs> your name. I, I think so. I'm the man with all the hair, all the hair. Everyone in the crew is bald. Everyone uh, outside of the building is bald. Yeah, it's just me. That's because you're stealing little... their hair. I, I've been suspecting that. I don't think you're growing it. I think you're just harvesting. Uh, well, Titi, who needs Santeria hair, you know, I do what I can for her. Yeah. Uh... I, I don't know what that means, but okay. Anyway, before we get into this week's amazing contest in the tournament, let's go up and look at last week's highlights as we review the Carter Group going in against the high seas. The following matchup is a first round matchup in the Harry Tarjanian Side Dow $20,000 Tag Team Tournament. And up goes Cody. <laughs> Courtesy of future legend and Harry Turjanian. <laughs> Cover one at the moment. Oh, wait a minute. Oh! Maybe you should play less shuffleboard, otherwise you wouldn't be in this situation. Look oh, at that! Stomping right on the face. Irish whip into the corner. Oh! Looking to go up. Connor nails him. That's got to be it. Cover one, two. No, and taking advantage of the chaos is the Carter group here. Draws him right. Oh! Wow, a spine buster. Lineman destroying Cloudy, and that's all she wrote. Oh! The Royal Sweep. You can count to a thousand, folks. One, two, three. All right, so we're taking a look at last week's matchup, and as we saw the Carter group, um, I have to say I, I, I am surprised by their win. Uh, I'm surprised and I'm not surprised, but before we get into my thoughts, let's really, uh, let's let's take it down to the panel. Uh, Brandon Lewis, whose name I know, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? Because I know you are probably gloating since you did predict that accurately. Uh, for me, it wasn't a hard prediction. I think the only... Uh, the only thing that had me maybe a little second guess in my prediction was I didn't know how well uh, Darius would work uh, as a tag team. You know, I see him as a one man, you know, as a one man army. He's the leader. He's the guy who's, you know, he's a solo act. So I was a little curious, but I trust in the all father. And I, I knew he'd take that away. I, I'm just wondering why you look so disappointed and sad about that. Well, look, I've said it over and over again. When it comes to Darius Carter, while I respect the man and his talent and his abilities, I don't necessarily think he goes about things the right way. Uh, I've been questioning why has it been so long since the richest prize in all of wrestling uh, has been uh, without gold. I've also wanted to know about this brand new tag team partner. New tag teams usually have a gelling period that he seems to just, both of them just seem to want to um, just bypass but you know what um hc i want to get your take on that especially since you are familiar with the high seas very familiar with the high seas very and on top familiar. of that you know player coach want to know your thoughts very familiar like i said last week you know i was disappointed in that outcome i believe in my guys very very much we got a lot of work to do we went over that last week we'll get back to work and they'll be back in catalyst don't worry about that but you know can i say i'm super surprised i'm not i put over Darius Carter last week, and I believe what I said. That guy wrestles like a star. That's something you can't teach. That's experience. That's that's God given. He's a he's got something special. We didn't know anything about this partner. But you talk about a blue chipper. How can you argue with that? To me, I mean, bold prediction. But if my guys are out of the tournament already, and I can be I can be free with you, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm calling Carter. Dude. That's my picture of the whole thing. Oh no, well that's a good question. So I'm gonna bring that up now. Um, 
With Darius Carter and Ricardo Group doing so well and seemingly overnight and without even a test period for them, is there a chance that the Carter Group is going to become the dominant not only faction but tag team in all of Catalyst? And are they the favorites to win this tournament? Um, HC, you just said that you think so. Uh, Brendan Lewis, uh, you, you sure your prediction on that? Uh, yeah, I can see them going to the finals. I can see them uh, getting all of the money, all $20,000. They will be a dominant team, but they will not be the dominant team because $20,000 is not the same as 20 pounds of gold. Hot Boys are still champions of the world, of the universe, of the entire stratosphere, my friends. Money doesn't it doesn't equal greatness. I still got to ask. We've been talking about the Spruigs. I'm still curious. Okay, so even though the Hot Boys may not be a contender in the tournament anymore, you got to say, though, are you worried? Are you concerned? Those tag team titles, the Carter Group, you have to have some inkling of fear, dare I say, about the Carter Group taking what your boys got, right? Look, I, I, I felt like a couple weeks ago, I got a little hot under the collar and... Uh, I don't want to tread on old conversation, but uh, I'll, so I'll make this quick and to the point. We're not afraid, but we are aware that we are a target. When you are champions, you are always a target. So whether it's the Carter Group, the Ducks, High Seas, uh, people who haven't even been in Catalyst and are just itching to get their foot in the door, and of course they're going to set their side, uh, their sights on the champions. You know, we, we got to keep our eyes open, always. But are we afraid? No, David Lee, no. <laughs> All right, HC, same, same question. So you already said that they're your favorites to win the tournament, and I can understand that. I respect that. But in terms of the tag team division, should they be going for gold? And after winning an entire tournament, does that tax you? Is that is that something you should set your sights on immediately or should you hold off on? Well, what do you think the best strategy for the Carter Group is as a tag team going forward? Listen, it's definitely not about taking any type of break or cooling down after a tournament. By design, we're supposed to do this every night. Our, our, our The people that paved the way for this, for us, wrestled eight or 10 times a week. And I'm proud to, proud to say I've been able to do that at points throughout my career. No, 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 you don't slow down, you don't take a break. If you've got the momentum, if you're winning and you know you're clicking with your partner, you got a chance at those titles, you take them now. You take them now. Yeah, that's great, you win the title, you win the tournament, I should say. But that that right there says you're one of the best tag teams in the world. You deserve a shot at those tag team titles. And I'd go for it right now. First, the second that those finals are over. All right. Well, Brandon, your boys might have to find out the answer to that question sooner rather than later, according to HC Look. Okay. Coming up, we're going to be taking a look at this week's exciting contest in the $20,000 Side Down Tournament. We'll be getting that right after this. Welcome back to the program here at Catalyst Wrestling, where we are breaking down the $20,000 Side Down Tag Team Tournament. And as we return, we just had some recap from last week, but now on to this week's match up in the tournament. We're going to be taking a look at the first team. First team in tonight's contest, and I gotta say, I'm... I'm personally very scared of these guys. So, uh, introducing to you now, the Hudson County Horror Show. They say a mind is a beautiful thing to waste. Well, luckily the man standing next to me has four, not you stupid. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to all my new friends. <laughs> Catch ya! <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, uh Cooter! <laughs> and, um, hey, man, I don't like you, pal. <laughs> I don't like me either. Cyclone! <laughs> There's treachery afoot. Beware. Oh, oh, and, and I believe one more than that. Vegas! <laughs> hey, how you doing, guy? How's your mother? Come here, come here, bring it in, my, friend. My, my. It's been so long since I've seen you. How's your mama? Tell it. Beautiful lasagna, huh? 
You see, young Lucas, we didn't <laughs> gain guy. one new member of our faction. We gained four whole friends today. You know what that means now, Lucas? Including me, you have five friends! <laughs> All right, um, they just keep getting scarier and scarier. I don't know if it's just me or what. Um, uh, yeah, I always get weirded out around these guys. Uh, but you know, Mr. Tarjanian's all about them. But what, what, am, what can I do? Anyway, uh, Brandon, so uh, your, your opinion on the Hudson County Horror Show and where they stand in this contest. Um, I don't really like these guys. You know, I try to be fair and cordial and kind to all of Catalyst's roster. Uh, but if I'm being very honest, they make me uncomfortable. Uh, Cutshaw is an odd man, and I don't know how many men are living in his head. Uh, and I don't know how someone like Mike Law can prepare for that kind of, because you, you know, you can plan for one man, you know, maybe you can plan for two, maybe you can plan for Zach on the outside, but how do you plan for which personality is going to show up at any point in time during the match? I, 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 I don't know. That's a good, that's a good point, but I have to counter with that. And I want uh, your thoughts on this HC and it's that, Yes, you can't plan for for an entire uh, legion all in one, but at the same hand, Mike Law, mystery partner, Hudson County Horror Show doesn't know who they're going against. So, who do you think's got the uh, the advantage, the uh, the surprise advantage, HC? That's the toughest question you can ask, Dave. I mean, it's a, it's a mystery on both ends, right? I uh, we know a lot about Mike Law. We know what a hell of a competitor he is. A tough guy. I'd want him on my side if I was going into a fight. Now look at the other side. You got the big guy with, do we know how many personalities? Can they all fight? Do every one of his personalities know how to wrestle? You know what I mean? What, it, and then the other, Lucas, I mean, maybe he's a nice young man. He's, I, he's a child. He's a student <laughs> at this. You have, that's no disrespect. Hey man, oh. we were all young once, but he's a kid. And he's got this giant man with next to him that is, what could be, that's more of a mystery than than the other team's mystery partner can be. It's uh, so. That's my favorite part of the whole thing, Loke. When I, I calls him like I see him, brother. It's uh, <laughs> so Mike Law, just based on the fact that the other team, I'm with Brandon, I gotta agree. I, I don't know, I don't know what I think of this team, the horror show. So I'm going Mike Law and whoever. That's my guess. Okay. Um, now I am curious about this though, um, Brandon. So you just—I <laughs> saw you had a little giggle there about uh, the uh, the youth uh, intern Lucas, right? Yeah. So I have to ask if, if you if you're not all that if you're not as confident with intern Lucas. Why do you think um, Hudson County Horror Show, why do you think Zach Amico is picking this particular team? Uh, what about Monster? Do you think, do you think he's, still, uh, he's still reeling with the injuries from uh, his attack with Gangone? Do you think he's, uh, in, in which case, how, why isn't Zach involved? Do you think the same thing? Well, what are your thoughts on this specific choosing? I don't know where Monster is, and I don't want to assume what Zach is thinking, but if I could venture a guess, it's probably better that the Monster is focused on the mission that he already has. You know, you already have members who can take care of this mission, and, and that's probably for the best. Um, but that's all I can give you. Zach's a wild guy. I don't know what's on his mind. Okay, that's fair. Uh, but okay, so I, I like what you had to say, and yeah, you're right. It is hard to figure. It is hard to figure out the mind of one Zach Amico. But uh, let's instead talk about Mike's partner, Mike Law's partner, Colossal Mike Law, because I'm very curious about this. Um, now we know he was unable to get, uh, secure Killian McMurphy because. Um, um, Mr. Tarjanian has sent him on an errand. That's the official wording from Mr. Entertainment Eric oh. Tarjanian. Uh, anyway, so here's the question. Now, HC, I got to bring this up. I know you don't believe in the curse of the Sapphire television title. I know that. 
But you can't deny that professional wrestlers, the locker room, can be a superstitious lot. And so, even though you may not subscribe to that idea, perhaps Mike Loy isn't going to be choosing a partner as much as he's finding who's available because maybe some people don't want that that uh that 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 curse on their hands especially around halloween and the hudson county horror show so uh what do you think about that and his options who do you think it who do you think my girl might pick it see listen curses no you know how i feel about that but superstitious you hit the nail on the head with that brother pro wrestlers are a superstitious bunch a friend of mine a certain guy who innovated a lot of violence he hasn't washed his knee pads since 1995 because he believes that what he ever does, his career is over. Superstitious indeed. But no slumps. Slumps, I agree with. No, no curses. But a slump, you have to ask yourself who would want to tag with Mike right now? Is, is he worried about this slump or whatever? Is that going to be a big L on his record? I have no idea. I don't even dare catch a, a venture a guess on who his tag team partner might be. I'm excited to find out. Um, I'm excited myself, um, especially because uh, after coming off of the, the singles loss to Steve Kipke, I am willing to see that maybe, maybe if there is a curse, maybe it only affects singles matches. And hey, you know what? Speaking of which, I would I would be interested to see if it was Steve Kipke as Mike Law's surprise partner. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that right now is my official guest, who I think Mike Law is bringing to the dance, because that's a team I would like to see. All right, but I think enough, uh, enough, uh, enough waiting. Let's go ahead and find out as we go to Colossal Mike Law and find out who he'll be teaming with in the $20,000 tag team tournament here on Sidow Island going against the Hudson County Horror Show. What's going on, Mike? Yo, man, what's going on? Oh, it's kind of crazy. I keep hearing about people getting kidnapped, blindfolded. You got a ride. You told me to come dressed in gear. Like, ready to go, right? What's up? Yeah, what you got? Listen, man, that's Gumbag Harry Trajani hooked me up with this ride. I figured I'd take a ride out here. And I said to myself, when I was coming up, late 1998, early 2000, this was tag team, man. To me, they were the scariest, biggest, toughest motherfuckers I've ever seen. The and SAT? Me, not quite. Expect the yeah. unexpected. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe this Chris is free connection. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely wild. All right. right. But these guys were worse. They were tougher. They were the toughest two guys that I've ever seen, man. And they dominated everywhere they were. They dominated Northeast. They dominated Japan. They dominated anywhere and everywhere they were set foot to. And I said to myself, I need a tag team partner. I need somebody who's still a man in this business of boys. I need a man who's a man of his word. Somebody who's a tag team specialist. A man that when he goes in there, people fear that motherfucker. And you, Steve Mack, are that guy. So how about you and I go out tonight? We take some of Harry's money. How much money are we talking? I'm gonna say 20 grand. Let's drop some motherfuckers. Fuck it. Let's, Let's go. All right, here we go. The mystery has been solved. We see who Mike Law is going to be teaming with. Uh, HC, I'm gonna start with you because I believe you have some history with the man. History, brother, history. I have known Steve Mack, Monster Mack, for 18 years. I personally have been to so many wars with him and a partner, different partners he's had. This is a guy that knows all about the gold in professional wrestling when it comes to tag team wrestling. I've seen him win tournaments before. You know, there's three gods of tag team wrestling, okay? There's Arn Anderson, me, and Steve Mack. Let me tell you right now, that's a guy, if he could be your partner, good pick by Mike Law. Officially, that is my pick for this match. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm prone to agree with you, player slash coach that you are. Uh, I trust your experience, but um, Brandon, gotta gotta say, I, I know you're not the biggest Mike Law fan, but I have but I have to ask, who do you think's winning this contest, and what do you think about Mike's tag partner? You know, I would have went with uh, the horror show at the beginning of this, but now seeing Monster Mac there. Oh, this is impressive. I like this because Mike Law brought his own monster to the game. Yeah, this is interesting, but I think this is even smarter for Mac. Not that Mac needs the help, but 
anytime you have an opportunity on camera, on television, with all these people viewing, and you're standing side by side with a former champ, you know, the eyes are gonna be on you. This is an opportunity for Monster Mac. And yes, I'm sure Mike Law will, you know, be able to get something out of this as well. I mean, have you seen Monster Mac? That's a big dude. Yeah, so everybody wins. Well, except for the horror show at the end of this. This was a good choice. So something that we should not overlook is that, wow, Mike Law, uh, Mike Law brought his monster, even though the horror show did not. But something else I want to touch upon is that Monster Mac, way back in the day, came up with Homicide, former Catalyst champion. And because of that, I think when you have a similar background to someone proven to be world championship material, that definitely translates. And when you have the size that Monster Mac does combined with, well, the colossal there's probably look I, I all due respect to to all the personalities that cut has as well as intern lucas but i gotta say i am I'm, I'm going with i'm going with monster mac and mike law but smart Ruby, man. yeah You're smart man we're, we're all the green dog house yeah. alumni He's somebody who's been through the nastiest of fights, and that was just training. And my favorite part is something that H.C. Loke already brought up, is that young boy who's going to be in the ring <laughs> in there with Monster Mac. I'm getting the popcorn, guys. This is going to be a good one. Where's the popcorn? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is a first round match in the Saigao Tag Team Tournament. Very good. <laughs> Introducing first, representing the Hudson County Horror Show, a man with four personalities and a boy with none. We're working on that part. The intern and the innate, Lucas and Hutshaw. <laughs> And another wonderful job announcing from Sakamiko. And their opponents, introducing first, Monster Matt. And his partner, the colossal Mike Law. And you heard Fit Chris Fega's introductions here. This is another first round tag matchup in the side out tournament. As you see, Sakamiko. Still hurting from the vicious attack by Anthony Cangone with the chair. But he's got his guys highly motivated here. And it, this will be a big test. $20,000 on the line, courtesy of future legend in this tournament. And brought to you also by Harry Turjanian. Let's not forget that. But uh, Mike Law making his uh, way into this tag team tournament by... Uh, by way of a singles match, and uh, I have allowed him to pick his own partner there, Steve Mack, Monster Mack himself. And now the colossal Mike Law standing off against intern Lucas here. And Mike Law looking angry here. And Zach Amico shouting instructions to the intern Lucas. lock there. Now look at that, a little bit of training. You see Lucas still learning his craft here. Very. Oh, look, it's a little bit of maneuvering around. You can see he's been working on some of that. Mike Law trying to down the colossal Mike Law. Trying to break the hold. Finally does. And now manipulating the wrist himself is the colossal one. The first ever Sapphire Television Champion and one of the first members of the Catalyst roster handpicked. Ooh, look at this. Quickly, well, Lucas Manu doing some chain wrestling on his own. Side headlock takeover. Shoulders down. Coming a long way from his first match here at Catalyst Wrestling, where he wrestled a stuffed turtle. I try not to remember that. I still get it. Well, he showed me the initiative. I saw the guts there of what could be a, a, a future star. And, of course, uh, I needed to give an intern to Zach Amico. What, what, so. the turtle? The future star was the turtle. The turtle is uh, out of the business now. Now Mike Law 
Still, no man really gaining the advantage here in the early goings. Rear Look at chin this. lock. The colossal Mike Law working over. Intern Lucas is Zach Amico shouts instructions. On the outside waiting is Cutshaw. The inmate and the intern here trying to, which would be a huge upset. And on the other side, of course, Monster Mac, who has held six different tag team championships and can be considered for sure one of the most proficient tag team wrestlers in our industry. Look at this, a hip toss from Colossal Mike Law. Looks like the tag, but didn't. Deep arm drag there, holding on to it. Intern Lucas seemed very frustrated, went in for more and then just got dragged down. And now the colossal Mike Law just slowly trying to wear down intern Lucas, who's still learning his craft here. He's still doing wrestling training, being paid for, of course, by uh, Zach Amico. You can see some of the things that Lucas has learned here. A little bit of the chain wrestling. A standing drop kick. So excited, Lucas is... But now making the tag to the 20-plus year veteran Monster Mac, Listen here, an imposing easy, figure. An easy ride. I know, I know. You better tell your manager, keep his mouth At over shut. 275 pounds. You better keep his mouth shut, because I will drop A powerhouse. And Monster Mac not wanting to hear any more instructions from Zach Amico. And Zach Amico instantly quieted up. It's going to take more than that for the MLW, JAPW, and ROH veteran. Do you know what that means? I have all kinds of accolades that you don't even know about. Sorry. And Monster Mac, an impromptu training session. You hide yourself up. Yes, sir. Now get it. Let's go. Tell him we got to move here. China. How did, how did he think, how did we think that was going to go? Oh, Luke is ducking underneath, trying to fight back. But Monster Mac relishing in this. He's Almost really with a smile on his face, wanting Lucas to push himself here. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a lesson for you, Lucas. One of the most anticipated debuts in this company. Oh, slapping him across the face, a shot to the gut. Ooh, wow. Clubbing blows. Monster, uh, Monster Mac. And here comes a, like a Mack truck. Lucas doing the smartest thing he could do, which is get out of the way. Oh, power slam. That's gotta be a cover one, two. And Cutshaw making the save here. Cutshaw having no fear. Answer Lucas has to get out of here. Gotta make the tag. And again, the fight or flight instincts of intern Lucas, uh, his only advantage in this situation against Monster Mac, a 20 year veteran. And Monster Mac unimpressed. He's saying, if, you gotta, if you're going to come, come correct. Oh! Ouch. Uh, yeah, he came and went with that one. Monster Mac. One. And Monster Mac uh, deciding that he's going to make Lucas suffer a little bit more here as. Zach Amico looks on in horror. Well, Monster Mac takes this very seriously. He's here to win $20,000. He's here to prove he's one of the best. Well, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, no. Monster oh, Mac no. climbing to up to the top. Oh, this is not good for Lucas. It's almost 300 pounds. And smartly, Lucas tagging in Cutshaw. The newest protege of Zach Amico. Entering the ring here, clearly disturbed. I feel a little refreshed after that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kutchall, uh, the reputation going around is that he is, uh, suffers from multiple personality disorder. And the colossal Mike Law wants in. Calling for the tag here. There might be a size difference here, but the difference in heart is easy to see as the colossal Mike Law fights with a ferocity matched by no one. And now shoving him into the corner. Ooh. Oh. Caught. Oh. Spy must go on two. And look at this, Kotschall using that strength for as much as his reputation is being mentally deranged. A cranium crush here. 
pushing on those temples. Multiple personalities, and none of them are uh, pleasant to be around. Mike Law struggling to get to his feet, has to create separation. The hold loosening. Oh! But Cutshell throwing Law down. So the leg drop couldn't get it. This is the opportunity that Mike Law needs. Ooh. Close line, cover one. Cutshell, one count. the much bigger competitor here. Colossal Mike Law unable to get more than a, a full count there. Looking to fly. Blockbuster. He's got to make the tag here. Both competitors Stretching down. out his hands. Who can make it to the corner first? He's got to make the tag. Here it comes. Tag is made. And in comes Monster Mac, who fears none of the personalities. Oh, Monster Mac waiting for him. Oh. He's pulsating here. Uh, Oh, what, is, no. what is going oh, on no. here? I know what this is. We're seeing uh, one of the many person. Oh, this is Ross Vegas. Who? What is going on? That's one of his alternate personalities. How do you know this? Wait. Yeah, Ross Vegas is not as uh, fearless as... Uh, as Cutshaw is. And unfortunately, the intern Lucas, who. You got this! I know you got this! And, and the intern. And Lucas uh, not being exactly swayed by the motivational speech from Zach Amico. But he's trying. Boy, is he trying. Oh, oh. suplex! Almost <laughs> snapped him in half. And Ross Vegas on the outside. Or Tag made. Cutshaw trying to talk to his himself. Looking for the forearm oh, here. Oh, we know his poor intern, Lucas. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. Hell? Turning Mike Law inside out is Monster Mac. What was that all about? <laughs> what is happening? Throwing Could intern Lucas, one, cover two. one, two. What an incredible upset. Intern Lucas. Getting the one, two, three over the colossal Mike Law. And Monster Mac has betrayed Mike Law. Here are your winners representing the Hudson County Horror Show, the intern and the inmate. Hey, it's always gonna be That's good stuff, all Loki Good job, buddy. That's my boy! Oh, it's the Brown! And Zach Amico ecstatic. You won! That the Intern Lucas got the one, two, three. But what does that mean for Monster Mac? And what does that mean for Mike Law here? Well, all that matters is that the Hudson County Horror Show moves on to the second round of the $20,000 tournament. The side out tournament brought to you by future legend and me, Mr. Entertainment, Harry Turjanian. Mike Law still struggling to get to his feet. And, and intern, intern Lucas, Lucas, I believe, still thinks he's in the match. Uh, but once he realizes that he won, he's in for a, a long night of celebrating. Come on, you just made me big money. You job, buddy. Yeah, we're going to fight. Yes. This is what champions look like. And look at the face of the colossal Mike Law. How many obstacles must Mike Law face here in Catalyst Wrestling before he catches a break? If you want rebellion, if you want violence, if you want action, if you want wrestling, this is the DVD you need. Buy the uncensored, unfiltered, unhinged event that will make you feel something you haven't felt in a long time. The only show to step into the world of comedy. The show that brought homicide back to Brooklyn. This is New York City. This is Skankfest. This is is Catalyst Wrestling. Gangfest 2019, available July 7th on DVD. Live in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, boys and girls, what did I tell you? That's right, the Hudson County Horror Show. 
has made it to the next level of the tag team tournament. The next round awaits us and our opponents, the rep. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what, boys? You know who you're facing? Because we don't. <laughs> Not yet. It could be Cutshaw and Lucas, or Lucas and Monster, or Monster and Cutshaw. Or me and Monster, or me and Cutshaw, or me and Lucas, because it's horror show rules, baby! <laughs> and we're going to have so much fun. July is smoke has. Our business will never be done. Not after you spat in my beautiful face. We'll see you in the next round of the tag tourney, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's keep going. We're on a win streak, baby. Hot to drop. Not smokes. Not supposed. Anybody but supposed. <laughs> Wait up! Just trying to bite my tongue here is all I'm gonna do. Um, alright, so, Loke, uh, tell us about what we just saw between... <sighs> you saw, you saw yeah. it. You, you know, you know what happened right there, right? Yeah. This guy that I just put over, that I just said was one of the top tag team specialists in the country in the world. Me too. Monster Mac, Steve Mac, right? He yep. tagged him. <laughs> yeah. He tagged yeah, him all right. Listen, <laughs> listen. How do you find I mean, that funny? But, I would I'm sorry. You actually, guys yeah. know a little bit about this business, a little bit about this industry. But if not, let me tell you about something, okay? If a guy reaches his hand out and says, I have an opportunity for you, at this company you haven't worked at yet, to make some serious money in a tournament, to have a high profile match that is gonna be seen all over the world on the Catalyst Wrestling TV show. And you turn your back on them, your very first match in the company. There's a thing called respect in our industry. There's a thing called paying it forward. I just told you that I had known Steve Mack, Monster Mack for 18 years. You think you would learn these lessons by now to not bite the hand that feeds you I don't know, Dave. I don't know, Brandon. Maybe you've got an explanation for what we just saw. Because I don't get it. Uh, personally, I gotta, I gotta ask, um, Brandon, because listen, as I said, I, I consider Mike Law as a friend of mine, and so I hate to see anything like this happen. Uh, but in addition to it, how you found this humorous? So what is so funny about this to you, Brandon? Because I feel like even though technically I was wrong, my prediction was right. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I thought Steve Mack, I'm sorry. I thought Monster Mack and uh, Mike Law were going to win. I really did. But I also said that this is a good opportunity for Monster Mack. And Monster Mack took that opportunity. And he took that opportunity on Mike Law, former champion. You call it a curse, I call it an opportunity. Mike Law, <laughs> you know what? I'm done talking about Mike Law. Let's talk about Monster Mac. Monster Mac will be back on Catalyst Wrestling. Monster Mac made an impression on everyone watching. He damn sure made an impression on the head on Mike Law. <laughs> this is, uh, this was fun for me. This was exciting, unpredictable wrestling. Well, unpredictable is right. I be, but I guess we have to start establishing something of a pattern. It seems that whenever, whenever, with all due respect, Mr. Tarjanian appears to being nice to somebody that he typically isn't a fan of, uh, you should probably watch your back because uh, he's done this to Gibke. He he's done. He allowed Mike to pick somebody. Now this is just what he does. Okay, but I guess I have nothing to worry about because he's never nice to me. So I, I should be feeling fine on this one. And look, 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 look. I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. Maybe Mike Law smells like those knee pads that Loke was talking about. I would want to get him as far away from me as possible. Just go. Well, as it turns out, uh, we uh, just now we do we are going to get an explanation. Uh, we have an urgent message from Harry Tarjanian and Monster Mac. Wonderful. Colossal Mike Law, sweet naive Mike Law. You might think you're the heart and soul of Catalyst Wrestling, but you're certainly not the brains. Because why you would think that Homicide's right hand man would help you out is beyond reproach. But it doesn't matter because you're gonna learn the lesson that a lot of people here need to learn. The promoter always wins. 
It's like I said right after I hit Mike Law with that clothesline from Compton. Blood is always going to be thicker than water. This right here represents dominance and excellence when it comes to the Northeast. Catalyst is about to find out how everything is about to change. But like I told you when we first talked, you keep filling my wallets with money and I'll keep filling the ring with blood and we gonna be good. Now that's entertainment. All right, it looks like it, that was it. I guess $20,000 for a tournament and earning it isn't everything to everyone when you can just get it handed to you. Um, uh, this, HC, you want an explanation? You got one. Yeah, great explanation. Great explanation. Maybe, maybe uh, if uh, Monster Mac had maybe uh, made a little bit more of an effort to take care of his own career and make some money over the last 18, 20 years, maybe he wouldn't have to sell people's asses down the river like that. You know, it's your first, I get it. I've been around this business a long time. People do shady things for shady reasons, sometimes for no reason at all. But your first match in, you had a, you had a chance. You had a chance to grab that ring, to win this title, and to make yourself a legend all over again. Listen, he's in my age group, okay? I don't think anybody's quite as old as me and still doing it. I'm probably straight hairs. But he's in my age group, okay? How many second acts do you get? He had a chance for greatness. Now, he's got an asterisk next to it. Whatever happens next, it's because he took the payoff, took the shortcut, wasn't willing to come in like I'm willing to come into Callis Wrestling with my guys, and prove that we still got it. We've got it better than ever before. Steve Mack didn't have that kind of honor. We didn't want to take that opportunity. Hold on, can I ask you a question, Look, Why does it matter if it's the first time? Why does it matter if it's the first day? Because he, he has an opportunity. You want to talk about opportunities? I'm glad you understand that, Brandon, that our business is about opportunities. If your opportunity is to come in and win and be a champion, be a star, be a tournament champion, or, the first chance, uh, the first times our viewers see you, the first time you've been seen on a national and indeed international level in many, many years, you want to take the cheap way out as opposed to, hey, you, you know what that shows me? Maybe you don't believe in yourself no more. Maybe you ain't good at this no more. Maybe that's your only chance to make any money in this industry is to take it that way. All I know is when people close the, uh, the window of whatever screen they are watching this show on, people will be talking about Monster Mac. And, and that's that's the important thing, thing to me. They will be talking about him. Positive, negative, they're going to talk about him. And we'll see him again. And he will be great. I, I, I hate to agree with him. I really, really hate to. I really hate to agree with him. But do it. Do it. Brandon, Brandon, Brandon's got a point. Uh, because, and to tie it into something you've mentioned previously, uh, there are those who live to fight and those who fight to live. And when it comes to professional wrestling, it is a job for some people more than it is about the thrill, the honor of competition. So you, you talked about the age, you talked about the, a lifelong career. Has Mac not proven his point? Is he not right to now just take the payday without the fight? And as Brandon put it, he's put himself on the map. People are going to remember what he did to Colossal Mike Law till the end of time. So is Brandon Right? Brandon is not totally wrong. I'll give you that much. Yes, people well, will be talking you. about Monster Mac. Of course, no such thing as bad press, right? My only point on this, and why it upsets me so much, and why I brought up the age thing, and why I brought up the veteran thing, is because when, I, when our viewers, when any wrestling fan looks at me, and guys like me, which I thought Steve Mac was, I want them to say that is something that we aspire to be in the professional wrestling industry, okay? You don't have to admire me outside of the ring. But when you see me inside the ring, when you see guys my age inside the ring still going, I want you to look at us and say, God damn, I can do this my whole life. I can be like that guy and carry an industry and a profession on their back with honor. When you throw away all of that honor, again, yes, your first crack, your first chance to make your one chance to make a first impression, right? Your first impression is to crap on the whole thing. Then that's what people are going to remember. Yeah, they'll remember him. I'll sure he'll. I'm sure he'll be back. But he had a chance for glory. He got a couple bucks. Big deal. He'll spend that 
in a month. I don't know how much he got, but then he's got to live with what he did forever. How many more chances does he have? Now, that's a good question. How many chances does he have left? Um, all right, I guess we'll just have to, I, I guess we'll just have to see what what unfolds next. But speaking of what's next, let's let's talk about next week because next week will be the first of the Pick Your Poison here on Catalyst Wrestling. I'm not gonna lie, it feels a little weird with how nice Heritage Genie's being towards me. He's letting me pick anybody I want in the whole world to wrestle Homicide before I get my shot at him again. It took a while, but I think I found the perfect person for the job. I looked all around the Catalyst Wrestling locker room, and there are a few good candidates, but they lack something because I'm not just looking for any wrestler. I'm looking for a maniac. So I made a few calls, maybe to some people I wouldn't even call friends anymore, but I found the perfect opponent for Homicide. And whoever you wanna put in front of me, Homicide, it don't matter because I will be ready because when the Catalyst Wrestling Champion comes to Sidal, he's leaving with what's his. Harry, I thought this was supposed to be an island. I don't see anything here. No beach, no tiki torches. We're in the parking lot of an industrial complex. Okay, you know what? I am so tired of your constant complaints. Why don't you just enjoy what is here? How about some of the local exotic animals, huh? Harry, that's a dog. We don't know what breed it is. You're so <laughs> negative and I'm sick and tired of it. You know what? I'm done with this. I'm gonna go back to the hotel and I'm taking myself a nice hot bath, all right? Uh, about that. Uh, the hot water. Let me guess. I'm gonna need a little bit more to make that happen. More, Harry. Just a little bit, just a taste. Thank you. Thank you. More? Thank you. Thank you. Let's just you. go. Let's Thank just go. Thank you. Please enjoy your stay, your cable television, your hot water. <laughs> 